So do soft chambers have a benefit or is it just a myth? Do you need high pressure in order to get all the benefits you're looking for? Or do soft chambers actually offer a benefit? That's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. One of my main goals in all of the work that we're doing, especially this YouTube channel, is to deal with a lot of the myths and misconceptions about hyperbaric. I believe that hyperbaric oxygen is one of the most powerful tools that any of us might have in our toolbox to really help patients in so many different cases. However, hyperbaric, after all of these years, it's been around for over 300 years. It's been in more of the mainstream clinical use for the last 50 years. And the awareness has really grown in the last five years on all the different things that hyperbaric actually can do and help people with. However, it remains one of the most underutilized tools out there. And I believe that the biggest reason that this underutilization continues is because people don't fully understand what it is, how it works. And ultimately, these myths continue to persist in the industry, making it confusing and having doctors or other healthcare practitioners shy away from recommending it or using it in their office. This question of whether or not soft chambers actually work is one of the biggest myths. So I wanna talk about the details behind pressure and oxygen again, because that's what answers this question. It's not a question of do soft materials create pressure or not, or is this soft thing or this hard chamber is one of those materials superior in terms of physiological benefit, that wouldn't make any sense. The question is the amount of pressure that they generate and are they valuable? Can you create physiological benefit at what's considered to be mild hyperbarics? Let's put some numbers to this. Right now, I'm at sea level. I am at one atmosphere. One atmosphere is 14.7 PSI. Anything above one atmosphere of pressure, anything above one ATA or anything above 14.7 PSI would be an increased pressure on my body. As that pressure increases, especially if the pressure increases and the percentage of oxygen increases, there's now an increased pressure of oxygen. As soon as there's an increased pressure of oxygen, it completely changes the dynamic of how my body pulls that oxygen from the environment and starts to dissolve it into my bloodstream. Right now, there's a certain quantity of oxygen that my body is capable of delivering to my cells. And that is very specifically regulated through my red blood cell carrying capacity. Red blood cells carry oxygen from the lungs to the cells. And the amount of red blood cells that I have, the health of those red blood cells, determines how easily and how well I can extract the oxygen from the environment, ultimately deliver it to my cells. The moment I start experiencing higher pressures of oxygen than what I'm experiencing right now, that extra oxygen is now dissolved in the plasma of the blood. As soon as there's more oxygen dissolved in the plasma of the blood, I am now capable of delivering higher than normal levels of oxygen to my cells. We're at one atmosphere right now. A soft chamber goes to 1.3 ATA. In other words, 0.3 or a third of an atmosphere more than what I'm experiencing without being inside that chamber. So at roughly a 30% increase in pressure, if I were breathing still 21% oxygen, if I was breathing air, and I was exposed to 30% more pressure, I could basically dissolve almost 30% more oxygen into my plasma. So if oxygen has a purpose at one atmosphere, which we all know that it does, and now I can get 30% more because I'm getting this increase in pressure, then clearly I'm now delivering a roughly a 30% increase of oxygen to the working tissues, to the cells. So does that have a physiological effect? Absolutely. It has to. If I was at two atmospheres of pressure, which a hard chamber would be required, and I was breathing 100% oxygen, the pressure of oxygen is literally gonna be between 11 and 12 times what I'm getting right now at one atmosphere on 21% oxygen. So is 30% increased oxygen meaningful? Yes. Is 11 or 12 times the amount of oxygen I'm getting right now more meaningful? Yes. Do they all help oxygenate the tissues? In other words, hyperbaric oxygenation, using hyperbaric devices, increased pressure to oxygenate your cells and tissues works as soon as you get any amount of pressure greater than whatever amount of pressure your body is acclimated to in this moment. Now the question is, what amount of pressure 
is able to do what to our bodies? And the truth of the matter is, is we don't know all of those details just yet. We have done a bunch of videos on different amounts of pressures and, and what you can expect in terms of at least what the research has expressed, what you can expect as a result of those exposures. But generally speaking, if you looked at this strictly from a mitochondrial cellular energy component, as soon as you start delivering higher levels of oxygen to the cell, that mitochondria is definitely going to be getting more oxygen, which is going to allow it to make more ATP. That is absolutely going to happen. As you make more ATP, there's two consequences or there's two benefits to that. Number one, more ATP means more cellular energy, which means all of your cells are going to upregulate their ability to do their job and to function. If that's a neuron, maybe that's its ability to communicate with your body. If that's your liver, maybe that's the ability for it to detoxify. If it's your intestines, maybe that's its ability to absorb nutrients. Obviously, I'm simplifying things a little bit, but ultimately, as cells get more energy, whatever their job happens to be, they'll be able to do more of that job. They'll, they'll be capable of more work because they're producing more energy. The other thing that's gonna happen as a result of increasing cellular energy, you're going to get an increase in superoxide. We've also talked about superoxide many times in other videos, but superoxide is basically the main free radical that your body will create in response to increased cellular energy. A lot of people think that that's a negative. However, we, we know that that free radical happens to be a key component to cell signaling that leads to hormonal balance, neurotransmitter balance, stem cell responses, reducing inflammation, increasing immune system function. Even though there are some negative components to free radicals, that is a necessary cell signaling molecule for most of the regenerative and healing pathways that we know hyperbaric to be capable of. Could you expect the exact same response from a 1.3 air-only chamber that you would expect to get from a 2.0, 100% oxygen environment? Absolutely not. But could you say that a 1.3 oxygen environment doesn't create physiological balance? That would be equally inaccurate. And so what we need to do is we need to understand gas laws, physics, and physiology just to have a reasonable conversation about the effect that the pressure of oxygen has on our body, our ability to extract higher levels of oxygen from our environment due to the increase in pressure, and then all of the cell signaling cascades that get stimulated as a response of those exposures. Do soft chambers work? Yes, of course they do. What is their place in the continuum of hyperbaric? I think that that's still yet to be determined exactly, but we can certainly say that number one, it has the capacity to help with many different issues and health challenges that patients are facing, simply because it's obviously going to be increasing oxygen carrying inside the body. Likewise, we can say we should not be applying soft chambers or 1.3 atmospheres to the 14 approved FDA indications where you're treating gangrene and osteonecrosis, really severe, life-threatening, limb-threatening illnesses probably will require higher levels of oxygen. That makes perfect sense. And so we should not be treating FDA approved indications using mild pressures, and nobody should claim to do so. At the same time, we shouldn't be discounting the physiological effect of 1.3 atmospheres because we know that it has a therapeutic value. So like most arguments, it, neither extreme is correct. The answer is going to be somewhere in the middle. And it's our job to have reasonable conversations so that we can understand this and actually do the work and really do the research necessary so that we can know which of these pressures are going to have exactly which therapeutic effects and how to best apply those different pressures for different patients based on their needs and their wants. I hope this helps answer the question, are soft chambers a scam? They absolutely are not. I do expect quite a few comments on this one. What I will ask is that let's have a nice, respectful debate on whether or not you believe that soft chambers have value and why or why not you believe they have a place in the healthcare system. And let's discuss physiology, let's discuss gas laws and physics, and let's come up with a rationale for exactly what place they do hold in our system and where they best fit. In the meantime, if you found this helpful, please share the video with somebody you think might benefit from the content. And of course, as I always say, like it, subscribe to the channel. By doing so, that helps us reach more people to answer other people's questions 
they have the same questions that you do. And the more people we can reach, the more of this information we can get out there. So again, thanks for your attention and we'll see you next time. So whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.